I'm going to start off with two slides from the first talk I gave in this series uh, to explain why, how this sort of sequence moves on from the first talk I gave, which was to explain that in, around the world, mortality is increasingly being concentrated in the first 28 days of life and then not until late old age. Uh, the first one uh, is from the UK, uh, well, from England and Wales more specifically. And I think it's, uh, the, this is the, age, the mortality by age with less than one right down at the bottom up to over 85 up at the top. Uh, and what it looked like in 1968, uh, which was after some of you were born, um, and what it looks like uh, roughly now. And what you can see uh, is that uh, the, the age at which people died has gradually moved up, particularly actually among men, largely due to reductions in smoking. Uh, and this uh, increase in age of mortality is uh, continuing and is likely to continue for the rest of at least all of our lifetimes. The probability is, uh, the, the um, ONS thinks, that the average child born in this year will, if they're a girl, reach 94 years of age. This is the average person. And if they're a boy, 91. So that is the direction for children born today. If you had a grand grandchild or child born in this year, that's what you're, you would expect. Alongside this has been an enormously welcome change in the mortality among children around the world, including in the UK and European countries, northern countries like the USA, but much more startlingly, actually, in Africa and Asia. And again, I've, this is a, the second slide from my previous talk. Uh, this is a quotation, one of my favorite ones from The Economist. Africa is experiencing some of the biggest falls in child mortality ever seen anywhere. And the same has been true uh, to a slightly slower degree, but to a really very considerable degree in Asia and Latin America as well. There are multiple reasons for this, and if people are interested in this who didn't go to my last talk, it's all online. Fantastic, it's free to all users. Um, but the, these include better nutrition, better housing, broad, broadly better health services, vaccinations, a whole series of things, each one of which contributes a small amount, but the, the net effect of which has been to lead to a very dramatic reduction in childhood mortality. And this is irreversible. This is a phenomenal gift from our generation, the last generation, to future generations. This is something uh, which I think we can collectively, as a generation, take a lot of pride in. Now, those make two of what I have for convenience divided into four major drivers of, mortality, of, of, of uh, demography and demographic change. So rapidly falling child mortality, particularly in poorer countries, and rising age of mortality in all countries, but in particular in more developed countries. The third big medical issue is fertility. The number of children that women have on average across a generation. And one of the things which is really striking in every country in the world on in every social and religious and economic group is that when, when the countries develop, women get education and contraception is widely available, numbers of children per woman drop. That is true everywhere and it is largely irreversible. There is no example that I have found of any generation of women who have access to contraception having more children than their mothers did. So this is a one-way door. Over the last 15 to 20 years, and I'll show some of the numbers on this, the fertility around the world has substantially reduced. Um, and uh, this largely due to availability of contraception and socioeconomic development. And now we've got to a situation where there are quite a large number of what are called low fertility countries, uh, including many European countries, I'm about to show this, where in fact there are fewer children per mother than, the, than is the replacement number. The replacement number being just above two. So there are many countries in Europe and in other, other parts, Asia, increasingly Latin America, where that's the, that's the case. So falling child mortality, rising age of adults dying, and then the uh, and fertility are the three big uh, medical drivers. And the fourth one, which I'm not going to talk very much about because it's not a medical issue, but it is an issue, uh, although probably the least important of these, is migration, except in a few particular countries. 